Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much for joining me again. So, the beautiful Nancy over at Nancy um, Texas Rose channel, she was doing a, um, you know, getting, ready, getting rid of um, a few of her decks. Um, she was doing a deck culling. And so... I just happened to be watching YouTube right at the right time, I guess, because her um, video came right through my feed at the time that I was, I had just got on. So I was lucky enough to um, grab a couple of the decks off of her, and this is one of those decks. So she gave me a wonderful price. She sent those out really quickly. She's just a sweetheart. I will be putting a link to her channel um, down below. So please make sure that you go and check her out. Now this particular deck walkthrough that I'm going to be doing, this is for the Divine Muses Oracle. And it came with the cards in a bag. And it came with the guidebook, which is quite large. And wonderful so I am going to um, I will say and I don't know if she had any problems or anybody that has this particular deck has this problems but they made this um, bag a little bit too small I think because it's really difficult for me to get this out of the bag and I mean that was actually one of the easier times that I got it out um, because it's so snug, I'm always afraid if I take it out, I'm going to be hurting the corners of the deck. So I'm probably going to be not using this bag because I struggle with it. But it is gorgeous. I love it. So, um, let me show you the... Now, first of all, this is a first edition, I believe. The first, um, the first printing of this. But it is currently on um, Kickstarter right now in a second print. So this is available through a second print. Now, I'm not sure if there's any changes from the first print to the second print. But I'm sure you can uh, find that out at Kickstarter. Which I'll be also putting a link down below to the current Kickstarter um, campaign for this particular deck. So the deck itself... Or I should say the book itself has 263 pages. The author is uh, Marie N. Bento. And does it say anything about the illustrator? Written and created by Marie Bento. That's what it says. And as I said, it has 263 pages. She talks about with gratitude, the table of contents, introduction. She goes on to talk about essence and shadow, animals and alchemy, about the creation of the deck, a uh, note about the meanings, gender notes. Part one is using the cards. She's talking about ritual, uh, different ways that you can connect with your oracle deck. Readings with the cards, asking questions. Oh, it looks like she's also talking about the elements. Altar items that represent the four elements are fire, candles, or a small lamp, water, a chalice filled with purified water, and a crystal vase or seashells, air, feathers, lit incense, or smudge stick, earth as rocks and crystals, flowers, foliage, or a bowl of salt. Um, shuffling and cutting the deck. I mean, she gets in quite detail. Uh, one card layout, deck interview, past, present, future spread. Okay, here we go. Um, archetypal cross spread. I'm going to have to try some of these spreads with it. Creative freedom spread. All right. And then we get on to part two, which is the actual um, meanings or... Okay, it looks like it's quite hefty um, as far as uh, a lot of information for each card. So at the end, I will do a quick 
pick a card at the end, shuffle and pick a card, and then do a reading out of it so that we can see how this reads. Okay? Beautiful. It's a beautiful uh, book. And I'm not sure if these are in order. I might have shuffled them already. Not sure. But, you know, I'm just going to leave this because I'm running out of space. I'll just leave it right there. So we've got ancestors. Please don't mind the nails. I haven't done them. It is what it is. <laughs> I need to do them again. And I'm recording a whole bunch of these all in the same day. So they're all going to look the same for the next quite a few deck reviews or deck walkthroughs that I need to do. And uh, Astral Ascent. Very cool. Boundaries. I love the coloring i love the like bohemian victorian a little bit of gothic look at the backs the backs are, i i even like the backs this is very different than my usual decks that's why i loved it so much it looks like we've got uh, planetary uh, associations here which makes sense celestial union Mm, peacocks cosmic prints oh that was the first card which is beautiful let me put that here divine messenger eternal student right on Great mother, mm, with the snake there. Green goddess. I love that. Group mind. It's, reminds me a little bit of steampunk too. It's like a mixture of, because I see the Baroque stuff like, um, for Victorian. And the kind of artwork. Kindred spirits. Lattice of the soul. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. Definitely what she's wearing is very reminiscent of the Victorian period, I would say. Lunar masculine. I love that. Mm. Use of art. I love that. Muse of astrology. Oh, that's right. I remember going through this. There's lots of muses. Magical child. Not usually one for collage decks either, but I do like the effect of some of these cards. How they're all very, very antiqued. I'm just, just starting to embark on doing some scrapbooking so I could take pictures of some of these, print them out, and use them in some of the scrapbooking or junk journaling, however you want to call it. I guess they are probably different things. Use of dance. Love that. Use of eloquence. Beautiful. Oh, I love this card. Use of history. I just love scrolls like that with the uh, seals. Muse of hymns. Oh my gosh, that's so gorgeous. Muse of music. Muse of poetry. Huh. Mystical rapture. Love it. Use of tragedy. Wow. Perfect stranger. Psychic portal. Oh, you see a little bit of hints of a Ouija board back there. Oh, yeah. She's holding the planchette. 
Queen of Roses. Huh. Makes me think of War of the Roses. Huh. Raven, Raven King. Wow. Reflection. Wow. That's interesting, because that is definitely not her reflection. Resonance. Retreat. Beautiful. Oh, I love the spiral. Sacred Witch. Look at the Triquatra. And the Merkaba. Instead of the pentacle. Or six-pointed star. Sea Priestess. Wow. Beautiful. Shadow Queen. Interesting. Sin Eater. Something that I liked about this is that I don't have any other deck that is even close to, like, this kind of aesthetic. Solar Feminine. And I like that. Spirit of Home. Love tree houses. So cool. Totality of Infinity. The Ouroboros. I'm not sure what it says. Totem of Air. Totem of Earth. Little gnome. <laughs> Those fairies in there. Totem of Fire. Oh. Totem of Water. Oh, I love this card. True will. I love palmistry. I love anything new that I can sink my teeth into, honestly. It's exciting. I am the eternal student. Ultima Materia. Oh, unknown. Interesting. That is beautiful. The wild man. Wild woman. Look at the wolf. Ooh. I am not a, a, a fan of spiders by any means, but that is a really cool card. World Weaver. Wounded Healer. Beautiful. I love the writing in the back. The uh, Harlequin design. Beautiful. All right, so let's take a look at this particular. I don't know if she did that or if it came like that or if it's just because of the color of the actual cards themselves create that kind of look on the edge, but I love it. It's gorgeous. So let's see what card we get. I do like the cardstock. I mean, it's not thick, but some sometimes there's just something to be appreciated about um, cards that can be shuffled. Oh yeah, that shuffles beautifully. A beautiful shuffling card or deck. All right, so let's pick one. Ooh, Totem of Fire. So let's see what it says in the book. Totem of Fire, page 155. 
Sorry if you can hear the sirens in the back. I'm not in the background. I'm not sure what's going on. All right, spirits of fire, salamanders. The totem of fire card kindles passion, innovation, and growth. It is the expression of the elemental spirits of fire, which are vital, energetically creative, and transformative. We can see fire in in people when they express courage, enthusiasm, optimism, and are bursting with energy that is contagious. In Western mystical and magical traditions, fire is associated with the direction south and the colors orange and red. Its corresponding season is summer and time is the noonday sun, representing warmth, vitality, and energy. The fire element shows a flourishing and thriving energy it is considered one of the great purifiers due to its power of transmutation, which is why it is often connected to the realm of the spirit. Salamanders are the spirits of fire and are the mystical totem creatures for the tarot's wand suit. If this card has been drawn, consider the spiritual realm, the domain of the suit of wands. In it, we see the world of pure ideas, reflecting energy, action, creativity, inspiration, passion, growth, movement, and, and innovation. We, as witches, are magicians. We have tools that can be used in our personal practice or uh, oh, to personify fire, including candles, magic wands, or any light source. One can make contact with the divine through fire gazing which is a popular form of divination called pyromancy. Fire is a big part of spiritual work and an important aspect of any altar or ritual. When the totem of fire is pulled, its elemental energy could resolve or bring balance to your situation. Sunshine, sunshine could bring warmth and comfort if you've been indoors working all day. Perhaps a ritual fire is necessary for you to purify and transmute something within yourself. This may involve you throwing something into a fire pit or fireplace in a ceremonial way. Hmm, maybe we should do a fire tonight. Consider candle magic as a tool which can be used in spell work, rituals, or intentional work. If a practitioner of the mystical arts could do only one thing, we would light a candle, as it incorporates all the elements in one object. Flame is fire, smoking, smoke rising is air, melted wax is water, and the hard wax is earth. Isn't that interesting? I never thought of it like that. Then the space that we fill with intention, prayer, or mantra summons aether, or spirit which is the fifth element. The totem of fire could be referring to you or someone that you know who is a fire sign or has a lot of fire in their astrology chart or quite possibly one of the signs, which is Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, um, are being highlighted in astrology, in astrology news, whether it's a global or personal event. Well, we do have a lot of fire energy going on right now, unfortunately. Um, with all the fires that have been going on in the world. Shadow. The shadow side of this card is the reversal of this card can point to an imbalance of fire in one's behavior or be reflected in nature. Too much sun can bring drought as well as sunburns. Extreme heat on a hot summer day can cause anger to surface, making people's tempers flare. Absence of the fire element can show someone who is lethargic or lacking motivation. It can also manifest as pessimism and distrust in life. Too much fire can generate a behavior that lacks patience, sensitivity, or self-control. We can also see fire overload, overload if you are working too much and burning out, which is the end, which in the end can be counterproductive and hard on your health. Have you ever felt so enthusiastic and passionate about something or someone and then lost interest quickly? When you sense this phenomenon, it's a sign that your fire is waning. It's possible that you're overdoing it and need a break. You can come back to the situation later with a renewed fervor. 
The saying, like a moth to the flame, could be a cautionary metaphor for you right now. The warmth and comfort of someone might not be what it seems. Be on the lookout for what may be a self-destructive attraction. The shadow of this card can show drama, pushiness, and an inability to think through all of the consequences of a situation. In the card, this collage of the totem of fire features a fiery salamander on top of a branch. He is the magical dragon lizard or elemental spirit of fire. He emits blazing rays like the radiating, radiating sun. Well, there you go, guys. That was the um, book for the book reading of the Totem of Fire, which I thought was excellent. And it gives you so much information um, to really think about just in one card itself. So... Um, do you guys have this deck? Um, you know, do you use this deck regularly? Um, if so, leave me a comment down below and let me know. If you don't have it, I like I said, I will be putting a link down below to the current um, Kickstarter that's going on right now. I'm not sure how many days are left of it, but um, so look out for that if this is something that you're interested in. And again, I'd like to say thank you to Nancy. Um, I am very appreciative for the um, wonderful price, and I am sending you all love and light. Thank you so much.